Provo Beast do another install today. Today we're working on this Toyota Sienna and today we're replacing the factory radio with an aftermarket Pioneer unit. Um, in this install we're going to show you how to retain your factory steering wheel controls and retain your factory auxiliary input. We would like to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Sonic Electronics. So check them out for great deals on speakers, head units, amps, subs, wiring, etc. Use discount code PROVOBEAST for an instant 5% off your next purchase during checkout. Now let's go ahead and get the factory radio out. Now I use a panel tool and these panels along the side of the radio pop out with clips. All right, so what you'll need to do using a panel tool, get up underneath and basically work these panels loose. Once you do so, they just kind of pop on out. As you can see, there's a clip there, a clip there, a little clip there at the bottom. Now on the same side as well. Start from the bottom and kind of work the work them loose up above. You don't need to disconnect them; they're just out of the way. That'll expose your two on each side, 10 millimeters. And then here at the top, we also need to pop this little top panel out, also held on with clips. Once done so, then the whole radio itself will come free. All right, so we pop this top off here. Start from the back. When you pop it off from the back, these little lips will then release. And those are the clips in the front area. Now, if you have the upgraded audio system, you may have a center channel. If not, then it should be empty like we have here. Then we move these two 10 millimeter bolts on both sides. At this point, you can go ahead and pull this on out. Disconnect your harnesses and your antenna on the back of the radio, and we'll go from that point. At this point, we went ahead and removed the factory radio. You can see our harnesses here and our antenna. Let's head over to the test bench and wire up our new radio. Okay, here we are at the bench. We have our new radio. We chose a Pioneer. We also have our dash kit, our wiring harness. We have a USB extension cable. We have a micro bypass for Pioneers and then a couple adapters allowing us to retain factory features. Now I'll go ahead and post in the description all the parts that we use in this install in the event that you wish to pick up the same. So what we're going to do is pull apart our wiring harness. Our Pioneer came with its own wiring harness and we're going to marry up colors um, in preparation for the install. Alright, so we have our Pioneer harness and we also have our adapter harness. We're using the Crux application, the 61S. And with this, it retains our steering wheel controls, our factory aux input, um, as well as all our other factory pieces. And so, what we're going to be doing is stripping both ends and marrying these up with butt connectors. We're going to use a wire stripper and these nice crimpers and uh, get everything wired up. All right, there we go. So we went ahead and married all the colors up. As you can see, with these butt connectors, we put in a nice crimp. Uh, the micro bypass, we went ahead and tied into the ground the blue-white wire for power and the green wire here which is the parking brake wire that's all good everything else was just matching colors we're gonna zip tie and make this all clean this uh, purple white wire for a backup camera we'll do a separate video on that and everything else is ready to go now before we head back to the car we're gonna go ahead and get our dash kit on our radio and get that all prepped alright so we went ahead and mounted our dash kit on our radio we're using this American International kit. You can also get a Metro Scotch one. We chose this kit as it was available. Um, our wiring harness is all ready to go. So at this point, let's head over to the car and get everything installed. Now, just a quick note here. Um, this is our factory aux from our harness. Now, if you have an aux 3.5 millimeter input on the back of your radio, you'll just need one of these guys' little adapter harness. You can pick these up on Amazon. Basically, it's a female RCA to a male uh, 3.5 plug. All right, let's head into the uh, van itself and start getting things assembled. All right, here we are back in the car. Now, before we start assembling the radio back in the dash, um, we actually picked up this USB extension, which one plug will plug into the rear USB input on our radio. Um, what we're going to do is actually replace one of our factory cigarette lighters with this USB, kind of a factory integration look. And the way to get into these cigarette lighters so we can pop them out, we have to remove this little piece around our gear shift. Now there's two 10 millimeter bolts there at the top, which will loosen it. And the rest are held on with clips. It just 
lifts up and over. We need to pop this off and uh, that'll allow us access to those wires. All right, we went ahead and disconnected this trim panel piece. We did the one 10 millimeter bolt on the right hand side and the wrists are held on with clips. You may have to pull the gear shifter down a couple of times for this to pop over. But as you can see here, there's a clip there, a clip there and a clip there. And on this side, there's a clip there and a clip there, and it just comes out all as one piece. Now that gives us access to our cigarette lighter inputs, and what we're gonna do is pop one of those out and replace it with our USB adapter. All right, so what we did is we popped this on out, and on the back of this little pocket here, there's little tabs that hold in your cigarette lighter. And we popped that out and replaced it and popped in a dual USB flush mount adapter. And it comes with a little nut on the back. One of the USBs is going to go to the back of our Pioneer radio. And then the other one is we used the can that we popped out here. And we just plugged in one of those adapters, USB car adapters, and then taped it all up as one piece. And this will plug right back into that factory wiring. So one essentially will be for charging, and then the other one will be the USB connection to the radio. Kind of cool. So we're going to go ahead and get this all put back together, reassembled at the lower pocket. We're going to go ahead and plug in our wiring harness adapter. We're going to get our radio in and really start buttoning things up. Okay, at this point we pop this panel back on in. So remember the lower one is USB charging. Plugged our two harnesses back in. And then the top one we were just ran up here and this will plug into the back of our radio we plugged in our harness adapters all three of them are different pin so they plug and play and at this point we're ready to install our radio into the dash cavity let's go ahead and hook up all our harnesses to it okay so we ran the bluetooth mic what we did is got that mounted just right here on the headliner and then tuck the cord up and then tuck the cord in here and then you can pull back the, the stripping here. And then we ran the cord all the way down. Once underneath, we just zip tied it to wiring and pulled it up through into the dash cavity, as you can see right here. So at this point, everything's ready for the radio to go in. Okay, at this point, we went ahead and mounted the radio and popped the top cover on and put in our 10 millimeter bolts on both sides. Let's do a quick boot up for you. Perfect. There we are. There's our steering wheel controls work great. Our USB plug also works down here at the bottom. At this point, let's go ahead and reassemble the dash. Okay, at this point, went ahead and got everything all put back together here. Everything's all buttoned up nice and clean. Steering wheel controls work great. Factory aux works great. At this point, we are done. If you have any questions about this install, just go ahead and post a comment below. Uh, thanks guys for watching the channel and we will see you in the next video.